At the beginning of the code, we only set variables and coefficients once. Variables, etc. And those assignments should be completed very quickly. But in the time stepping loop, time loop, we are repeating all of the EZ and HY updates over and over and over again at every grid cell and for every time step. So let's focus on dividing up the between the two processors, the EZ and the HY update calculations in the time stepping loop. To figure out how we should divide up the EZ and HY updates, we should look at the update equations that we are, are, are applying to all of our field components across the grid and over time. If we examine these equations, we can see that in order to update any field component, we only need the value of the component at the same position that we're updating and then only at the two neighboring positions as well. What is important here is that to update a field component, we do not need knowledge of the field components anywhere else in the grid. We only need the field component we're updating and the two neighboring values. So this means that spatially, the EZ and the HY updates are highly localized, and it doesn't matter if field components further away are on other processors. Also, we should keep in mind that the H fields are updated at half integer time steps and the EZ fields are updated at integer time steps. As a result, during time stepping, we are constantly alternating between updating electric and magnetic fields. So this tells us that both processors should have some electric and some magnetic fields so that we don't have to exchange all the field components between processors after every single half time step. So we shouldn't put all the electric fields on one processor, for example, and all the magnetic fields on the other processor. Putting all this together, to equally split the work as efficiently as possible, we should just cut the grid in half and update the left half of the grid on the first processor, let's call that processor 0, and the right half of the grid on processor 1, the second processor. Let's take a closer look at this. Consider a one-dimensional FDTD grid like the one shown here where I max here is equal to 10. We want to split this model onto two processors. To give each of these two processors the same amount of work, we should split the grid as equally in half as possible. So perhaps let's put all the field components up to one two, three, four, five. So this is easy five. Let's put this on processor zero and then starting with the next H component, we'll put the rest six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So this is IMAX, and this is HY5. So from here on, this will be processor 1. Looking at these two subgrids, for which components on processor 0 and 1 can we still perform regular updates? So regular updates. And for those components we can't perform regular updates on, what exactly do we need to do or change in the code so that we can update those field components? Presumably we need to send some data between the processors. What exactly should we send between the processors and when should we send it? Ultimately we want to obtain the same result from this code split between two processors as we did earlier for the code that ran on a single processor. So think about how exactly you would implement this.